really, really grateful for all of you who went out of your way and wore that. And right before I get in, I wanted to say thank you to, you to your amazing principal for inviting me. And I really just wanted to thank all of you for coming. Okay. Well, anyways, hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Juan, I'm 13. I live in Sherman Oaks, California. I enjoy doing these presentations and I'm a youth ambassador for the Tourette's Association of America. I'm here to talk to you about what Tourette's syndrome is, ticks, how Tourette's syndrome is portrayed in the media, to answer questions you may have, and to share some resources. Please wait to ask questions until the end of the presentation. Has anyone ever heard of Tourette's syndrome? You? Yeah, everyone has? Yes. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> so sometimes Tourette's syndrome is portrayed in the television or movies a different way than how it actually is shown. Uh, but today you're going to learn what truly Tourette's syndrome is. And for uncontrollable cursing or swearing, which some of you may have learned from Tourette's syndrome, that only occurs in less than 10% of people with Tourette's syndrome. It's not, everyone who has a Tourette's syndrome does not have a cursing tick. People are born with Tourette's syndrome. They did not do anything to catch it. You can't catch it from anyone, it's not contagious. There's no cure, and people who have Tourette's syndrome have it for life. It's okay. Tourette's syndrome is neurodevelopmental. Neuro means that it occurs in the brain and nervous system. Developmental means that Tourette's syndrome occurs and changes as the brain and nervous system is growing. Everyone's brains and bodies have chemicals that act as messengers and stop signs. When someone wants to raise their hand, the messengers run from their brain to their arm to their hand to tell them to move. When someone no longer wants to raise their hand, the messengers stop. For many people, the messengers pay attention to the stop signs. For people with Tourette's syndrome, that is not the case. This is what a person with Tourette's syndrome experiences or feels as ticks. We'll talk more about ticks themselves in a few minutes. Anyone can have Tourette's syndrome. It affects all races, ethnicities, and ages. Someone who is born with Tourette's syndrome has it for their whole life. Tourette's syndrome is a common medical condition. One out of every 160 children between the ages of five and 17 in the US has Tourette's syndrome. One out of every 100 children between the ages five and 17 in the US has Tourette's syndrome or another tick disorder. About half of the children in the United States with Tourette's syndrome go undiagnosed. What other medical conditions have you heard from? Has anyone heard of any other medical conditions? Any? Epilepsy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a diabetes. Yeah. yeah. ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Similar. Yeah. It's not usually anyone's fault that they have a medical condition. It's just something that you learn how to manage. How do you support people you know or your students who have a medical condition? Not just Tourette's syndrome, any. Any of you? Even like everybody else. Well, we find out what we can do to accommodate them to yeah. make to make them learn or like allergies you know we have to be aware of that yeah, exactly <laughs> and uh just for another side note for since this is an elementary school this is, it's very important for you guys to know that between the for the kindergarten and first grade teachers out here uh five-year-olds and six-year-olds that's where uh, people start showing signs of tips my little sister Jen, which we brought up, she just started she just got diagnosed me who has Tourette, I have Tourette's syndrome. And I really do want to try to keep a little lookout because there might be kids who start ticking then and you guys might not know. Yeah. Doctors define a tick as an involuntary, sudden, rapid, repetitive movement of sound. Tourette's syndrome cannot be cured, but there are treatments that can help manage the symptoms. Does anyone know what a tick is? Yeah. Some people, whenever I say tick, first thing that comes to their mind is the bug, but that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> no, no, no. There's many people who've said that. Yes, yeah, with a K. <laughs> yeah. 
a TIC tick is an uncontrollable movement or sound. I have ticks and you don't notice anything different besides that I have ticks for me, right? Mm -hmm. A tick is when a person's brain makes their body move or say something that they may not want to. A tick is like the earth to sneeze, cough, or scratch an itch. If you try to scratch an itch, it takes a lot of energy and it becomes all you can think of. And um, do you guys want to do the staring contest? <laughs> 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 Fine. Let's give the teacher some fun. Fine. <laughs> now we're going to do an activity. Turn to one of your neighbors and have a staring contest, and I'll give you guys some time. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> You feel a little bit of relief afterwards. Exactly. After a certain point, everyone gives in. To you. This is the same feeling that we have. There are two types of ticks: motor and vocal. Motor ticks are movements that cannot be controlled. Vocal ticks are sounds or bits of speech that cannot be controlled. Simple motor ticks usually involve just one group of muscles. Examples of simple motor tics include eye blinking, facial grimacing, jaw movements, head bobbing or jerking, shoulder shrugging, neck stretching, and arm jerking. Complex motor tics usually involve multiple muscle groups or combinations of movements that tend to be slower and look more intentional. Examples of complex motor tics include hopping, twirling, jumping, sticking out your tongue, kissing, pinching, and tearing paper or books. People who have either simple or complex motor tics cannot control them. Simple vocal tics include sounds such as sniffing, throat clearing, grunting, hooting, or shouting. Complex vocal tics include words or phrases that may or may not be recognizable, but consistently occur out of context or when we don't expect to hear them. Examples of complex vocal tics include repeating words or phrases by making animal sounds. People who have either simple or complex vocal tics cannot control them. <coughs> now we're going to watch a short video of people with Tourette's syndrome. As you watch, see if you notice the motor and vocal tics that people may have. I don't Do we have sound? You should, but. It, it goes up and down depending on the video. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's no internet. Missed <laughs> offer. <laughs> <laughs> Are they probably not connected to LAUSD? Yeah. There. Yeah. 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 All right. So, for me, that staring contest, it took a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just Imagine. to keep staring at somebody, and then I blinked first. So, um, and what she said was, you know, you blinked, and it was 
exactly what you were saying, a, a, a relief of like, yeah. trying to hold like that stare, that takes a lot of energy. While the mind does, does force you to make the ticks, it doesn't give you an extra energy to do it. So there's been times where people have had, actually had a very extreme tick, which I'd have to hold my breath for a long amount of time. It wouldn't stop once I ran out of breath. It would just keep going for like a certain amount of seconds. My face would be turning red and I couldn't do it. It doesn't give you extra energy. It just keeps going like a sentient body. Is there a, I'm so sorry, is there a neck or a toe or a man? Because when I stare, I'm scared. <coughs> I'm also pulling up, you're playing on my computer, Watch it on, like, I'll switch out real quick, so, like, yeah, we're maybe you can't get it up through your computer, so mm. it's Okay. <coughs> it's a popular video on YouTube, oh, so it's probably... It might work in my Yeah, finally. Yes. Yes. Tourette syndrome is a medical condition that people live with in their daily lives, they make involuntary sounds known as tics. It could be a sound or a movement <coughs> that the body cannot control. I have this one. Sometimes I click my tongue in the back of my throat like this, but not very often, and I constantly crack my knuckles, even if I already quit. So they, mo they mostly would ask me like, like why, like, like why my eyes keep twitching or like, or asking, or asking me if like my leg, if I can stop like moving my leg. The ticks, the ticks were more, were more like the head shaking as well, um, barking. Um, I sat a tick one for a while, where I'd step backwards and walk backwards for a couple of steps and then walk back. I had a tick uh, once when I was when I'd be standing and I'd lift up my leg. When I was first diagnosed, I was out of school for weeks. My tics were very high. Their, my vocal tics were elevated. My motor tics would really hurt me. Um, it was tough. You know, seven or so years old, I was responding, well, is this just gonna keep on? You know, is there gonna be like single me out and, and treated me more as, you know, as basically a, a, almost as if I was like an alien in a sense. And, because at that point in time, I didn't really understand much about what was happening. Yeah, I have a seven-year-old. When I take him to school and I go down the elevator, right before we get on the elevator, I'll take my teeth and I'll bang my teeth against the wall. And he asked me, what are you doing, Dad? So I said, oh, I have Tourette's syndrome. It's a new condition that causes me to do things I don't want to do. And so it, the funny thing is, the other day he comes up to me. We're standing there and I don't do it on the elevator. And he said, Daddy, you didn't do your Tourette's. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's, it's, not, it's not like that. It doesn't work that way. It's hard to suppress a tick. And even if you do suppress a tick, when you're done suppressing the tick, they only come out more. I have to morph my words. Instead of saying bomb, 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 I go bop or bop, bop. If I try to suppress them, they, it doesn't work. Um, that's like trying to hold in a, a sneeze. Young girls would laugh, kind of embarrassing for an adult to be bullied by, by young teenagers. As a, as a young kid, I would, I would, you know, take whatever it was and immediately look around to see who, who noticed, you know, like as if it really mattered. And then, so then you really start to believe that you are different. I would be out on the subway and attracting attention from other people, adults, and like learning about how cruel people can be. Seeing those kids in D.C. at the conference, treating their tics as, as something... Okay, we're going to stop it there for now. <coughs> but, yeah, you can see how some tics look and sound like more. Now you have a clear mental image of how they look. Uh, you might have noticed while I was watching that video that I was ticking a little bit more. When someone thinks about their tics, it come, they tick more. So it's possible that being in a room with other people with Tourette's syndrome could trigger more tics. And here, I just want to talk to you about some special types of <coughs> tics. Coprolalia, I mentioned this at the beginning, is saying words or phrases that could be obscene or socially inappropriate. Coprapraxia is making uh, obscene or socially inappropriate gestures. Echolalia 
is, repre is repeating words and phrases said by others. Palalia is repeating one's own words. All of these complex tics are uncontrollable. Tics can range from mild to severe. The types of tics a person has can change. At certain times, the tics may happen more often, and at other times, they may be less frequent. Sometimes tics are really intense, and other times, they can be pretty mild. Sometimes, tics change in response to specific internal or external factors, such as stress, anxiety, excitement, being tired, or illness. Stress and anxiety can be negative, like taking a test, or positive, going to a party or on vacation. Tics can also change over time for no reason at all. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about co-occurring conditions. Most people with Tourette's syndrome have co-occurring conditions. This means that they have another medical condition in addition to Tourette's syndrome. So may be present before and cause more impairment than the tics themselves. The most common co-occurring conditions include ADHD, OCD slash OCD, behavioral problems, anxiety, depression, mood problems, difficulty with social skills and relationships, sleeping problems, and rage. Now you're gonna experience for a very little while what it is like to have Tourette's syndrome. Does everyone have a have their paper? Mm -hmm. yeah. Flip it to the back side. And does everyone have their <coughs> pencil? Does everyone need a pencil? We have extras. They're on the table. Do you need a pencil? Do you need a pencil? Do you need a pencil? So everyone, is everyone good? Yeah. Everyone has their pencil, okay. So, research shows that it takes the average student 90 seconds to write the Pledge of Allegiance. You, you are going to write the Pledge of Allegiance. Remember that having Tourette's syndrome can, be, can make simple things difficult. While doing this, you're also going to have a tick. The tick will be touching your pinky finger on the hand that you are writing with to the desk. Every single time I clap, you have to tick. People with Tourette's syndrome do not tick because someone claps. I am having you tick when I clap because I'm acting like a Tourette's syndrome brain. I will give you 90 seconds to now write the pledge, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the stereotypes. <laughs> 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 This is being counted and you are being graded. Let me just get the number. Wait, wait, wait. You also Thank have this. Oh yeah, in every single three words, you'll have to scratch off or erase your preference of the third word. You'll have to scratch off or erase the third word that you write. So if you would write, so allegiance. I pledge allegiance, you'll have to scratch off allegiance and then put allegiance to the, scratch off the. So rewrite it and then yeah. go on. Oh, yeah, you have to rewrite. That's the way we <laughs> It's annoying. <laughs> 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 so, so really quick, every time he claps, touch your pinky, pinky. And, and every, every third, third word, word, scratch off and rewrite. Okay. Rewrite. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Go. Stress makes it worse. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, you make it progressively harder. I'm like forgetting the words. Me too. I know I have to look up.
And done. <laughs> Raise your hand if you finished. I'll be holding you guys for recess, so. <laughs> you probably heard that before. <laughs> okay, so how are you feeling during the test? <laughs> what was going through your mind? What were you thinking? I can't do this. Trying to remember to tap when we heard the clap yeah. and to cross out the third word. Yeah, it was very hard to focus. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. I gave up. <laughs> yeah. I counted the words. I thought I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get it, but I did. Frustration. I gave up on taking. I couldn't take it. <laughs> Teeter. <laughs> Well, while you have to deal with only one motor tick for this exercise, most people with Tourette's syndrome have multiple motor and vocal ticks and vocal. Wow. Now we're going to talk about Tourette's syndrome in the media. By media, we mean television, movies, books, social media, social media memes, and more. What have you heard in the media about Tourette's syndrome? Was it accurate? or was it a little bit far off than what I'm saying? I think most of what's been portrayed has been the, the inappropriate and inaccurate. And, yeah. Yeah, uh, me and my mom oh. were looking on YouTube, uh, looking at news about Tourette's syndrome, and I was seeing how they're posting videos about the most severe case of Tourette's syndrome, and immediately there's, there's no scale for severity. The there's obscenity. Nothing. They're yeah. just looking at one person's struggle and saying this person has Tourette's syndrome, it's, they're crazy. It does. It doesn't make them. It's not right. Doesn't make anyone feel good. It doesn't make the community. Feel yeah. Good. In media, the media often portrays Tourette's syndrome in a way that is incorrect and hurtful. Now that you know the facts about Tourette's syndrome, you can help others understand Tourette's syndrome better. Tourette's syndrome is not a joke. One way to support the Tourette community is to take the Tourette Association of America pledge to stop making jokes about people with Tourette's syndrome. And if you guys want to, at the end, I'll ask you guys if you want to do the pledge. And at the end, I'll, yeah, we'll do the pledge. Mm. Well, read it, read it. Read the pledge. Read the pledge. We're going to do that at the end. Or do you want to do hey, it now? Hey, do you guys want to do it? Who's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to do it now? Sure. Sure. <clears throat> OK. So let's start. I pledge to stop using Tourette's syndrome as a punchline, a descriptive term, or a slur. I pledge to speak out, educate, and inspire others to be open-minded and break free of the stigmas that surround this disorder. I pledge to create a world where people are seen for who they are and not their tics. I pledge to be the change for the Tourette community. Yeah, you guys did great. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there what thing? I'm going to ask you guys to raise your hand and actually answer this question. What have you guys learned? What's something new that you learned about Tourette syndrome? Like you said, how like you're like watching someone or focusing on ticks that you'll tick more. Yeah. I didn't realize that ticks change. The different types of things, the vocalizations, yes. the, I can't remember them all, I'm sorry. Yeah, complex, really all yes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, just that, that you feel it coming. I didn't realize that. I thought it was more like it just happened, but like like an it, that itch analogy, like that's a, yeah. it's, that sounds very stressful. Yeah, I almost feel, yeah, it seems like you have the urge and you can, I don't really know how I could say this. You can try to choose to not do it, but it eventually, instead of like an itch, it eventually goes away. It will just, it will just get worse over time. It will just never go away, and eventually, it will force you to do it physically. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't realize, I knew that the pinky would be distracting, but I didn't realize that thinking about when it was coming would be distracting too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thinking it about worse. it makes it worse. Yeah. So you're stuck in an endless loop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't realize it starts uh, showing up at five, yeah. you know, five to seven years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when it starts showing up. That's when it started for me and my little sister, and yeah, that's when it's most commonly starts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We want you to know what you think about this presentation on um, Tourette syndrome and hear uh, your ideas for improving it. Please scan the QR code on this PowerPoint slide with your phone or tablet to open up the questions we would like you to answer. We do not ask you your name so no one will know which answers came from you. I'll have this up like in like two seconds. I just wanna, it's the last slide, so I just wanna say thank you for inviting me here today. Tourette's official website, Tourette.org, for if you have any more questions. And now while I have this up, is, is there any questions about it? Is there any kind of research being done on a cure or help? Yeah, there's no cure yet, but there is being scientific, there's scientific research being done to try to suppress the tics, or they, some, most medicine just works around the co-occurring conditions, since most people have those. I think you sort of answered my question because I was going to say if it's like epilepsy, is there medicine you can take? Is there therapy or calming techniques you can use at all? They don't, me personally, I haven't really seen too many working therapeutical techniques. There is some techniques that work, but there's not enough research being done about it. It's more of a new, it's more of a new mental, dis it's more of a new uh, disorder coming around, so people don't really know about it. So there is, to answer your question in short, there is a little bit of medicine for it, but not enough to actually make a big difference. So the medication usually, um, sorry, uh, the medication usually uh, that we use for Tourette syndrome are usually used for something else. And that's another issue as well, because a lot of times insurances will cover a medication for blood pressure if you do have high blood pressure. But if that high blood pressure medication works to help reduce your tics and you're trying to access it, that's another challenge. Also, a lot of times when a child that age comes to the doctor, uh, most parents don't know about Tourette's. Yeah. So they'll go and they'll think, oh, she has allergies, she's coughing a lot, or it's very difficult to kind of tell. So by the time it's really, you realize what, what it is actually, which happened with us, it was well established and he had already lost hope. So it's really also important to realize and be aware of the red flags before because a lot of times we don't know. And by the time we know, it's such a struggle to try. There's not a lot of places where we can go for treatments. Um, really here it's basically UCLA who has a clinic for the, the Tick and Tourette's Association linked with it. Other than that, some doctors are aware, but even neurologists sometimes say, oh no, we don't know. So it, the research is done for that, for finding a cure or at least finding the right <coughs> treatment. And then that's why he became an ambassador is because what they do each year, uh, they will speak with um, representative of uh, the states or national representative and uh, keep requesting funding for the research. So he did that last February, uh, and every year that's what they do, because, well, you know, research needs funds, right? And it's difficult because Tourette's not well known, so a lot of people do not really think about putting money into that research. So really it's a lot in your hands, because you see these children sitting down and you, you, you're well aware of what's typical behavior and what's not, so we try to really raise that awareness within teachers because it's where it starts. I was just going to ask if you had any personal experience where maybe a teacher, yeah. or classmates didn't quite understand. And, and mm -hmm. Yeah, you. just uh, the most recent one last year, a teacher just kept telling me, uh, "Stop that! Stop that! It's bothering the class! Stop!" And the what were you more doing? I was just doing. It was one of my less visible things. I was just going a little like soft, little grunts. Just like, mm. Mm -hmm. Just a little thing, and she just kept screaming at me, stop humming. That's my entire class. <laughs> <laughs> That's kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I had to talk to her, and 
eventually got sorted out, but yeah. And I'm assuming it's hereditary? Uh, yeah, they, genetic, yeah, they genetic. think that uh, there's a genetic predisposition, so somehow, you know, a child does it, and then often the sibling gets it as well. Can it comes from the parent. Own family it's, yeah, I mean, it's strange, because for, for example, for us, nobody has Tourette's in our families, but you know, maybe the combination of Tourette's and that's what we need to try to figure, figure out. out. Or it could be like, you don't know, whereas there Some could be people, but they were never diagnosed. You know, it's crazy because some ticks back in the day so much not like talk about it. Right. No, not yeah. Yeah. No, no, so it, it's very complex. Yeah. What? So I want a before and after type thing. Before your teachers were made aware and before <laughs> your teachers now know how to accommodate you or to work, you know, help you out. How was school before that? And how is That's school now? Mostly it just kind of feels like the unsafe feeling of like them not knowing, like the uncomfortable talking situations. Like there's, you will, even if they haven't said something yet, it's just like, you feel like it's only a matter of time. You feel like eventually it's not even the teacher's fault if they don't know, because they think that you're actually just trying to be disruptive. And that's why it's important for people to know. But, but to clarify on that point there, he's in a program, it's called the Academy at Portola, and everyone knows, everyone has received his IEP, all of those teachers should know, but the important thing is to continually remind your teachers, mm -hmm. because that teacher that called him out for humming in front of the class and you know, telling him he's gonna be in trouble, should have known. I yeah. told them about it. Yeah. Right. Beginning yeah. of the year, I told them about it, I told the whole class about it. So you're proactive immediately. Yeah. And I think the knowledge of Tourette's makes a difference. Because when he first got diagnosed, we didn't know a lot. And so even if you tell your teachers, you're pretty much thinking, oh, that's his tick. And then all of a sudden, he starts moving his stomach. All of a sudden, his fingers go like this. And then he's humming. And then he's whistling. And you're like, oh my gosh, Like, how do you get a handle on this? And this, this like he said, this, this fear of not knowing what's coming next. You should show this to your classes, not to, uh, yeah. to the teachers, to the classes, so that they have a broader understanding. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, we're trying to do the, I'm going into the Tourette's Association, and I'm thinking of, since Bertola's uh, typically larger school, and I'm near it, I'm thinking of presenting to all the 2,000 kids. Yeah. And yes. the teachers. Yes. It would be great. Yeah. I'm thinking, that's trying, that, I'm right. trying to do that next. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there something a teacher has done to make you feel more relaxed or more comfortable? So I'm always asked this, and it's the hardest question to answer. So unfortunately, I don't think that there's much that a teacher themselves could do to help. But the important thing to do is that you know what it is, so the teachers know how to not hurt. It's more about, yeah. It's, it's a neutral environment that he yeah. needs. So if you keep saying, oh, stop doing that, then he keeps thinking about it. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, he keeps thinking about it. If you keep saying, hey, are you okay with your ticks? Are you okay with your ticks? It has kind of the same effect. But, but what his classmates have done, his friends have done, that has been the most important thing. They know and they've become advocates and allies. Yeah. And so that's really the key. At yeah. least for him, once he moved into the academy, he felt a sense of relief because they are truly my allies and they're not making fun of me. Yeah. I was going to ask you personally how it affected like friendships and getting to know people. Your dad kind of answered that right now, that you've got allies, but like Mr. Price stated, you know, from the beginning to now, friend base, you know, huge friend base, tight friend base, you know, I'm curious. Uh, personally, I have a, I have a tight friend base, a tight friend base with a few people, and then I have like other friends on the side, mm -hmm. but for me, it's I, it's very important for me to try to establish the friendship first, and then afterwards I tell them about it before they notice it, before they start noticing that like why is he doing all this stuff, so they don't have a negative opinion on me afterwards, like a developing opinion. I do it immediately, and I instead it fast, so they know that there's a reason for what I'm doing. Sort of a follow-up question. Yeah. You guys talked about you and your mom going on social media and seeing like it's horrible. Do you kind of leverage social media so you can show a positive and, or do you know people who do? Yeah, I know people who do that, like especially just for Tourette's syndrome and I'm thinking the next thing I'm gonna do when I get home, I'm gonna create a new account 
uh, new accounts for social media on different uh, Google, on different Google accounts and try to make just the whole thing just about Tourette's syndrome, a whole Tourette's syndrome account. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna try to do that next. That's my next project, just to try to leverage it on social media myself. Any other questions? Just a comment. I, I am so impressed with you. <laughs> and, and I don't know uh, how much the Tourette's actually contributed to your maturity and, and your background, having endured something rough. You know, you've grown and we'll never know how much it contributed, but I applaud you. I'm, I'm impressed. And you give a message. so much. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Can I also applaud your parents? Yes. Do you have a couple questions? Yeah. But I'm, I'll wait. Does anybody else have questions right now? <laughs> we're we're going to have existing okay. conditions do you have? Um, uh, I have ADHD. I have OCD, I have, I'm on the spectrum, and I have, and I have a little, I have like a slight depressive episodes, I have slight depressive episodes, and that all contributes, especially with the uh, OCD, because I have a type of numerical OCD, so I, I'm kind of hate some numbers, and I love some numbers, so I love the number three, hate the number two, love the number seven, love the number 16, so sometimes when I have ticks, I'll have to take three times. And if I just feel like sometimes it's just not enough, I'll have to take seven times, 16 mm -hmm. times. The worst it's ever gone is I had to do a take 16 times, 16 times. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 16 times, 16. That was the rough. That was rough. And principal question? All while trying to concentrate. <laughs> um, I'm already being asked if you could present to our fourth and fifth graders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Um, we're gonna have to obviously figure that out if you're willing to come back. So we're already booking. We're already booking you up. That's if you're wonderful. Because that's I'll all we have. To. That's the only tool we have, is to talk about it <clears throat> and make people aware of it. Because that's the only way kids like him will be able to feel comfortable. We, this community, we may have somebody who might be able to help you out in the future. That's wonderful. Them your funding and, and stuff like that. And somebody you can talk to that'll help find your voice. Um, that would be you wonderful. All know who that is. Um, but my second question was for your sister. Ellie, Elisa. look, we're gonna ask you a question over here. <laughs> Listen. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> How was SeaWorld? Great. Did you have that fun? What'd you do? Um, well, we touched a dolphin and also a beluga whale. Oh, <laughs> awesome. So it sounds like you had a good summer. All right. <laughs> Can I just share a little personal thing that happened last night, actually? And I think it's important. That's why it's important for the fourth and fifth graders and all the kids to know. Last, He has... A, a tick now that it's like a little bird call, like a, can, well, I don't, yeah, I I don't want to ask you to do it. I, mean, I know, I had a little kind and, of tick, it comes sorry. and goes. And what were you doing last night? Last night I was trying to fix the tick almost, it was weird, it was, I have this weird way where I could trick my brain into somehow developing a different tick. I don't know how, this isn't proven, there's no research on this like at all. No, it hasn't even been mentioned, it's like just something I can do. If I could trick my brain into right before it gives me the relief that I was talking about, to doing another take that's similar to it. For example, on the scale, it, I just go low on the scale, so instead of going, I go, mm, 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 mm. And he was and doing that softer. because he said, how are they gonna react? You know, his new class this year, and it, yeah, that's part of the that's stress. That's gonna be scared. Yeah. Everybody. Exactly, because when he left his, they know him, but he left having certain takes, and he's coming back with different ones, so. And then they and think he's people. faking it, like, yeah. oh, come on. At yeah. least it feels like it's going to disturb the class. Half of his classmates were not in his classes this year, so, you know. Yeah. It's like starting Do over every time. Do naturally change, or are you changing or altering them, or does it just depend on the person? Me changing it is just something I can do somehow. Everyone else's takes change naturally. There's two. Yeah, but it's... 
Um, there's no real research over if it's like a stress, a type of stress that changes into a Oh, and then it's tick. situational, right? Yeah. Remember the ambassador uh, training? Yeah, it's very, it's very, very situational, the ticks. It almost <laughs> seems this it contributes to the confusion factor, since sometimes ticks just burst out of random, just like one-time ticks. It'll be real. I'll be having a conversation, and all of a sudden, I'll say something relevant to the conversation in a negative way. Like, I'll say something <coughs> towards a person personal something and I'll say an accidental insult or something like that like it'll say just randomly the contributing it's really confusing but it's you, hard to say you indicated it's your brain trying to sabotage you though yeah it feels yesterday like it's you my described brain. it that way it feels like it's my brain trying to sabotage me it's really weird and then I'm so sorry it's situational because um, if for example when we did the ambassador training it was a room full of kids like him you know, from high level, low level, it was really barking to everything oh, it was, else. It was, it was really, it was difficult. It was difficult for all of them. But if one of them said something, the other one answered or did the same thing. And it was, it, it was almost a tick conversation. And that's when I realized there is a communication going on there almost, you know, and also, so that triggered it. And another thing that triggers it is make sure you don't say that word. So he has a friend who has coprolalia, goes to the plane to come back home after the training, and in his mind he's thinking, don't say anything bad. He sits down, the first thing he says, I have a bomb, I have a bomb, I have a bomb, <laughs> oh. right? So that's what I mean by it's situational, because it could create, situ I mean, if you tell your brain not to do it, it it's it gonna is. try everything mm -hmm. to do, it's, it's a complex, it's like, a, it's a mind game almost. But so game. then, another audience for this are law enforcement and yes. social workers yes because you say something like that they don't know where it's coming yeah. from yes and that's a huge trouble many people have been beat up yeah. because they'll say something and the officer will say stop that and they keep doing it yeah. and yeah 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 so we have, he has audience. been trained also for that we we did a training for law enforcement but i mean you know that's much more difficult to reach but but education is the key. Here, it is. So. It is. It's important for them to know early so it's already yes. engraved into their mind. In the, before they become officers in whatever yeah. academy exactly they're in. Exactly correct. It's all in your hands. Well, yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. Before they get out of elementary school. But people school. don't realize how they all start. I think you do a great job. Like you, you, you can come talk to our kids because yeah. you know, you're a young adult. And you can, but you're very personal. I'm sure all of us enjoy Thank you so hearing much. every word. And I know yes. the kids can relate to you, so they'll take it a little more seriously. So I heard you were amazing. You've exceeded expectations, yeah, I think, by looking around and hearing the conversations in the room. Everybody would agree. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Next time we'll silence that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. it's too loud. It's okay. Now, okay. uh, quickly, it's just really quick, because there's like one more question that we could just squeeze in from anyone who's. Yeah. So, um, I know we talked about it a little bit about in mainstream media. It's usually threats is kind of considered a joke or like it's supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. Has there been any mainstream media that has presented it well or positively? Yeah, like uh, we were talking about, the, um, I have a friend who is also an ambassador and I follow him on some social media platforms and he talks about Tritt Syndrome in forms, what it really is. There's some social media platforms like that. Well, he said main, mainstream, like mainstream, like yeah. Hollywood and stuff. Yeah, make some, a documentary. Yeah, so there are There's some a couple that portray movies. Um, one There's was called Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn. There's some movie. that portray it accurately, but the thing that we're trying to get at is that a lot of them are not accurate. Yeah. So I'm trying to get it to you from a credible source, from the Tourette's Association of America, so you can know the actual facts, so you don't get so no one gets confused. And on there, you can find links to a lot of like accurate movies or, vi or YouTube videos from. Professionals. So in other words, in Hollywood, they portray it like the worst case scenario. Yes. And sometimes it's just that little bird call that he does. Yeah. And you got to be able to recognize it. Yeah. There's a teacher. Do we know the teacher's name? I mean, he might already be retired. That's not cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but 
But I watched a movie on about him, and he kept going to job interview after job. Yes. Interview. Oh yes, yes, yes I that? love that yeah. one. No, that's not Brooklyn. That's the other one. No, that I was the other one. That was funny. And they, yes. he finally got a job, and he was an amazing teacher. The best, yeah. He yeah. Kept getting passed over because yeah. the ticks came up. This is yeah. definitely not a fact that I am really permitted to share. Like, not a like credible fact. <laughs> but some people, there's some MRI scans just starting uh, to fit. There's some uh, there's some criteria that say that people Tourette syndrome are dumber than the uh, natural population, and there's been some MRI scans that have been showing that we have uh, people with Tourette syndrome have more uh, have more uh, gray and brain matter. They have more gray brain matter, so they are naturally smarter. They have more, <laughs> basically, they have a bigger brain, literally. It's a PET scan and more, more areas of the brain light Fire up for certain, for certain things and it's showing that they're using more areas of their brain. It almost to me seems like evolution. It really seems like it. Like since our brains are getting bigger, like some animals evolved to have claws or sharper teeth and it almost seems like humans are evolving to have bigger brains. And there's some ups and downs to that, such as low impulse control and me not being able to control myself. Yeah. But then again, like, but Tourette syndrome does not say this. It's just something I've been researching myself. Mm -hmm. Any last question? Any What's last question? That's it? OK. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.